<clears throat> well, shall we? Let's do it. Well, welcome to Talking Shop. Uh, a few big changes before we get underway. Uh, we are in a new locale. We are uh, officially out of the other office, um, which uh, served us for many years. And uh, we are not quite set up here. We are working on it. Work so, in progress. Uh, we will be the next week or two. You'll see things come together. Uh, it should be a beautiful space for us to do this week in and week out. Uh, so Matt will be, be back. Here. And Matt is not with us uh, today, but he'll be back next week as well. Uh, so a lot of little little changes, but hopefully all for the better, uh, better picture quality, better sound, all those sorts of things uh, we are working on uh, improving for you, right? Uh, we do appreciate you guys. Always take time to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And um, always we, we're getting more and more people starting to share comments below. Uh, it's helpful to the whole community as we uh, struggle with preaching week in and week out. So take that time to do that as well. Today we are looking at... Luke chapter 20, 19 through, or not 19, 9 through 20. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a parable, the parable of the tenets. Uh, and we'll see how it's kind of our text the last month have been building up to this. Uh, this is, you know, we're getting close to, to Holy Week uh, uh, and, and all that that will bring. And this is kind of a capstone sort of setting us up. And one of the things uh, I know we talked about when we were working through the text was you kind of find that uh, in here, uh, no one is innocent except the Son, right? And then the Son does the unbelievable thing to take on uh, our lack of innocence, uh, our, even though we do not deserve it. So lots of uh, great uh, discussion here about uh, how to preach this text or how we might preach it. So um, yeah, let's get after it. Spit out my Lord in every way, yet I'm still welcome in the arms. All right, Luke, the King. chapter 29 through uh, 20. Actually, we pick up that last little verse there. Um, the parable of the tenants. And took his crown. Um, Yet I'm still this, this is a great one, I think, following up off what we did last week with the, uh, the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of that, uh, you know, again, this, this uh, kind of going all in uh, for the sake of, this for the sake of the vineyard, last time for the sake of restoring the son. Anyway, um, so... Yeah, you're uh, right. I mean, this is crazy. It takes that it to another same, step. Yeah. Because it's going all in for these wicked tenants. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to a son, you know, the father being so forgiving, lavishly gracious. But here, um, what's offered up is to not a son, but just some wicked tenants yeah. that really have um, punishment. They deserve temporal and eternal punishment. Right, right. Um, so he tells them this parable. It just kind of introduces the parable uh, right out of the gate. Uh, this comes on the heels, though, of his authority being questioned. Yeah. Um, and what we'll see is is uh, the chief priests and the scribes kind of get it at the end. They yeah. get that this is, uh, this is sort of aimed at them. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah. anyway, a man plants a vineyard. Uh, he rents it out to some farmers. You were all impressed. This is... Uh, uh, the same Georgians, where we get, yeah, Georgians. <laughs> this is where Georgia, that uh, uh, the kind of workers of the field, yeah, who they are the uh, uh, farmers or tenants. Um, and then he goes away for a long time, yeah, right, right. Um, and harvest time comes. Oh, we should say this um, when you're dealing with parables, I, I find it helpful preaching on it is to understand right at the get go, kind of. What what sort of parable is this? Is it okay. a parable teaching us about the kingdom of God, right. or is it teaching us about um, kind of our piety or those sorts of things? Yeah, and, um, right. And this seems to be a parable about the kingdom of God and about okay. what God's coming to do, yeah. uh, because well, we'll see as that plays out. So yeah. so he he's gone. So I mean that's yeah. the thing. So the one who's right. planting the vineyard isn't there right now. There's other people that are supposed to be taking care of it while he is absent, right? Right. But now the time has come for the harvest, mm -hmm. right? 
so the uh, the master of the vineyard or the lord of the vineyard uh, wants to get his his fruit, yeah. his stuff. I mean, he's got he wants what he has coming for him, right? You know, coming to him, and so he sends a servant, and you know, this servant is not well received. Right. Um, it kind of escalates. Yes. The first one. They beat him and sent him, sent him away empty-handed. Uh, so, all right, try again. Sends another right. one. And this one is beaded and treated shamefully. Right. And then sent away empty-handed. And uh, the third one, uh, I mean, this this vineyard owner does not give up. Right, yes. You know, he's... To, Continually he, sending pe uh, and, people out to his Like vineyard. you've pointed out, it's over a long time. Right, yeah. So, I mean, the fun G German word, we have to say it, is the Heilgeschichte. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which means salvation history. Salvation right? history. history. This isn't a just yeah. a... Um, it's not just a, a single moment. This is the ongoing revealing of God and yeah. his work uh, in the midst of his vineyard. And kind of uh, reiterating, recapitulating the history of God sending prophets to his people, mm -hmm. called them to repentance, and the prophets being... Well, it's like Jesus said a few weeks ago, our passage in Luke was, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who stone the prophets. Yeah, I was thinking the same, the same thing. Like, you know, he's basically there. He says, look, I have to go to Jerusalem because... That's where prophets are going to die, <laughs> exactly. right? But he he laments like this is what you've done, and yeah. here you get a parable that's kind of highlighting the exact same thing. Yeah, like he keeps sending servant after right. servant. Yeah, and and you're right that the escalation is maybe that's a good thing too. Is you can you could highlight that like the escalation of the mistreatment of the prophets yeah. escalates to exactly what's going to happen, the sending yeah. of the sun, right? Yes, uh, exactly. In, in, the, in, in the brutal treatment there, right? Um, so, yeah, so you're right. They uh, they just send them away empty. Beat them, send them away. Uh, they treat shamefully, send them away. Uh, and they wound the thir third and just throw them out. Yeah, right? So uh, there's this image of... I, almost like they're fortifying themselves yeah, in this right. place. Yeah, you know? like they're salivating. It's getting closer and closer. Right. And then finally uh, they got what they think is the best opportunity yet when the owner, in a scandalous, crazy way, says, what shall I do? Oh, they killed three of my servants, mistreated them, treated them shamefully, cast them out, so I'll send them my beloved son. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. Actually, it's a good way to put it. it it's a scandalous right. ordeal, right? Yeah. Uh, to to then send his son. Like, why why would you do that, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and so and and you get that that language of you know this is the one whom I love, right? Yeah. And they're hoping perhaps they'll respect this one, yeah. right? Uh, right. This is this is my own son. Um, and so he, so he sends him, and, it, and obviously this is opening up very clearly. You see this in Jesus. This is who he is. Yeah. He's the one who has come. Right. Uh, they should have been prepared, right? They had a, um, they had servant after servant coming, right. uh, speaking words, both of warning and of compassion. Yeah. Of their God turn and he will relent, these yes. kind of things. Yes, uh, the, the clarifying of the word of God amongst the people. Good Lenten uh, themes. Yes, yes. And like you said, the the last few weeks we've sort of been building up to this with yeah. the um, with the, the fig tree that doesn't produce fruit, right. the longing the the hand to gather the, yes. the chicks under his wings, right? All Fertilizing of, of it, and yeah. then giving it chance after chance, chance after chance, and then um, and then now um, and we just had the the parable of even. The father going out to the older son and saying, "Just come in, man. right? Come to the party. Right. Like right. you're my son. This is yeah. your brother. Celebrate, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I think a lot you could pull from if if you've been hitting these the weeks before. Uh, I think it's a good time to, if you're preaching this, probably to go back and pull yeah. some of those images in. I, I mean, not so. maybe not in detail, but right. some of them, right? Hit yeah. on the high points anyway." Just help provide some of that context in Luke and where Luke is going and the culmination upon us now. Yeah. Especially, uh, we got Palm Sunday coming up. The return of the king. 
And of course, this son was never recognized in that way. He wasn't given the proper respect, as we'll soon see here. That's not the history of where they went. Um, instead, they want to put themselves in the place, right. you know. Uh, I don't know if you remember that scene from, I think it was The Return of the King, the third installment of The Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. where Gandalf goes and has a talk to the steward. Yes. And he got so um, in love, enamored with his position of power as steward, he forgot he was just a steward. And not the king. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. he started to claim, right. you know, uh, that rule, that power that he had. Right. And that's the version of sin that I think this passage goes after. Yeah. I mean, you can always talk about sin in general, but in particular, that's, and how do we do that? You know, with things with which the Lord has entrusted us. That's good. You know, it could be our relationships, our families. It could be our homes, our property. Sure. It could be our vocations that the Lord has called us to just while we have our time on earth. But we don't own any of that. That's really good. That's some good stuff you could you could hit on in a sermon on this. That, you know, it's going to make them squirm a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because like you've you've been entrusted with things. Money. Yeah. yeah. And and how often do you behave as if no, this is mine? Yeah. I just by right is mine. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe we do that even more so as Americans, where you know, we're all big on our rights yeah, and those kind of right, things. And, right. and uh, this is what we're, we're given to do um, and, and that it gets twisted in, the, in yeah. our sinfulness for sure, right? Uh, so the tenants see the sun coming and they go, okay, fine, have your stuff. No, right? <laughs> no. Uh, they, their reasoning here is bizarre, yeah, right? Yeah, it kind of is. Right? Uh, here's the heir. They know who he is. <laughs> yeah. Here's the sun. Right. Uh, let's kill this one. Yeah. So the escalation continues. Now it's going to be death. Uh, and they believe what? If we kill him, then we get the stuff. The right. 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 Yeah. Um, now I was reading a little bit on some of the cultural background there in the Middle East where this kind of scenario comes into play that if the owner does not receive the fruit Right. Um, after a certain period of time, and I believe it was three years, in that fourth year, if it's if it goes unclaimed, then the squatters, as it were, right, it it defaults to them. Yeah. Okay. And it could also be that without a son, there's no one else to make Who's the left? claim. Who's left? Right. Yeah. Right. So then exactly. they're then they're they, of course it's there. Like yeah. they they get this. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they do just that: throw him out the vineyard and kill him. Right. Yep. And again, this is heavy foreshadowing of what's coming. Right. Oh yeah. Christ is is uh, cast outside the city walls. Yes. And there he is crucified. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, he is killed uh, outside the vineyard. Treated shamefully. Yep. All that. All that. Wounded yeah. for our transgressions. Yeah. He kind of actually takes all, <laughs> all of, of it. That. Right. It's not just the uh, the final bit, but uh, and that's where salvation true. history is going. That's right. Yeah. Um, so he then asks a question to those who are listening, to all these people, most importantly, the scribes and the chief priests probably, but uh, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? Yeah. Right? And what will he do? And what he answers his own yeah. question. Yeah, let me tell you what he's getting. <laughs> I don't want you to get this one wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to give you the answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A, he will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you, one wonders immediately, who are those others to whom he will be given? Uh, right. The and I think this is, this is a part of this text, to preach it, to drive this point home, might be one of the more difficult points to drive home. Because yeah. I think for our hearers today in you know, America, I mean, you know, the, the, the response of the, the chief priests and the scribes is surely not. Like, they immediately respond to this. Yeah, because they, they, they see jump on they it. see themselves in this. Like right. we have, you're saying we are the people that have been taking care of the vineyard. Yeah, and your things can be taken from us. Right. I mean, so that'd be a harder. It'd be interesting if some of our listeners can like like how they might focus on it. Like, you know, where do we find that today? Sort of yeah. that. Um, it, it could be maybe. Uh, 
you know, things like, you know, maybe in our day where we see uh, people lament the empty churches and those kind of things. Sure. Like, like maybe it's sort of that, you know, you thought by right you just got yeah. all this stuff or whatever. Right. And, and, you know, if you are unfaithful, like God, yeah. he won't hesitate to take it from you and give it to somebody else. Or, But, I mean, for them, I think this is like blood lineage. Oh, like yeah. Like it's deeper than I think maybe this we could really This is the promised land. Yeah, exactly what I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you're saying... It's going to be taken from us after all this time. All this time. And yeah. after all the work we've done, it sounds a little bit like the older brother here. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Exactly, yeah, it is and, the older brother. Yeah. And uh, then it's going to go to others. And you're not insinuating Gentiles by any chance, are you? <laughs> right, please. Because they've the already lovers. tried to throw them <laughs> off a cliff yeah. for Jesus mentioning the blessings coming to the Gentiles. Gentiles yeah. And if you mean that, and Luke does, because he writes with, with especially the Gentiles yeah. in perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, then they're incensed, and that's yeah. where they, uh, surely not. No way. That can't be. That could never be. That's right. That's yeah, right. Not that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so maybe maybe that's just how you do it. Maybe you just highlight that. Like, this is what yeah. this meant. Yeah. Like, even if we can't quite feel that, uh, but but this is what it is. Yeah, may this never be, right? Uh, um, and then he, so then he just expounds on it. He's just kind of like, oh, yeah? <laughs> Then uh, explain this text. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Yeah, right? from Psalm 118. Yeah. 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 So so what what you rejected, right, you know, is gonna become this leading thing. Yeah. Is the main thing. Yeah. Right. Right. And then and then he builds upon that even yeah. with, you know, everyone who falls in that stone will be broken to pieces, and those on whom the f- stone falls. Um, and like we were translating, it was like yeah. literally like ground to ground dust. To dust. Right? So what, what does that mean? What's he getting at with this? What do you think he's... Um, well, I'm going to s- sneakily import uh, some other passages that are assigned for that Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> but I could not make sense of until going through this a little bit more step by step. And you got Paul talking about um, being a Pharisee of Pharisees, but he doesn't count that as anything but rubbish now. Right. Uh, because he's got a surpassing righteousness. And the Old Testament passage from Isaiah is God is doing a new thing, and that's the capstone. Yeah. It's this, you, you have a capstone for a new building. Yeah. And God's doing something new, and it is going to involve bringing others into the vineyard. Um, it's not that um, you don't have Jews as in the apostles whom were called by the Lord himself, uh, the apostle Paul, and all the other Jews who repented and received and thus had the right to be called children of God. But the leaders here, the stewards, um, they get their grinding to dust. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, a new people are formed. That's more yeah. inclusive. Yeah, and I that, another way I've often uh, referenced this too or another point to make on it is that there's no avoiding this either. No. Like you will either fall over it or yeah. it will crush you like yeah. there's no there's no just eh you like yeah. we'll, we'll stay on the sideline like yeah. you have to deal with this yeah right? absolutely they you thought know? they could get rid of the first servant that was sent the yeah. second yeah. and they thought maybe they could even get rid of the son but yeah. you cannot you cannot yeah. yeah yeah um so uh uh the teachers of the law the chief priests uh, they they try to find a way to seize him um, <laughs> yeah because they know he's talking about them, right? <laughs> and uh, they're not happy. Uh, but they are they are afraid of the people. Yeah. Um, oh, and I guess you should say um, uh, this is where you get that in that very hour, right? Isn't that? Yeah, uh, right. Um, uh, verse 19, the scribes and yeah. chief per, uh, priests sought to lay hands on him in that, that very hour. Yeah, which is sort of a... A key marker in Luke, we yeah. were talking about. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned earlier where they were going to throw him off the uh, right uh, cliff. We're talking about the Gentiles there. Yes. And it was yeah. the same thing in that very hour, right? You get this yeah. this kind of these markers uh, yeah. with it. So, uh, yeah, the, they're gonna, they're going to do this, um, uh, but there's the, still this fear of the crowd, uh, which kind of uh, runs along for a while. And what's what's right. great in the greater narrative of of you know, the passion right. really is, 
you, you find out in the end, there's no need to be afraid of the crowd. They're no. going to turn on him too, right? There's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, they're not, uh, yeah, sort of altruistic or, you know, always on his side. Or and something. that's kind of, that's where the, the grace just comes through like a flood just rushes through in this passage because everybody is guilty yes. of rejecting the son. Yes. But, and it's prophesied. Mm -hmm. uh, God knows full well what's going to happen to his son and he goes through with it anyway. And everything that those stewards who were wicked tenants have, everything that they have coming to them, the son takes the brunt of instead is cast out. Yes. He takes the punishment, the punishment our transgressions is upon him. Mm -hmm. um, and we read through this and we think these wicked tenants, these stewards, they, they really, you kind of want to see them get there. You do want to see, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're part of it too. We're we part are. of that yeah. crowd that yep. yells crucify there's him, no, yeah, crucify him. There's no him. innocent here outside of that son. And, right. and he takes it all yep. and on the cross says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, so it kind of ends with uh, verse 20, keeping a close watch on him. Uh, they send in spies, yeah. pretending to be the, the kind of the hypocrite sort of thing. Right. Um, hoping to catch Jesus in what he says um, so they can hand him over to the authority. The only thing I thought when I work on that is um, uh, there is a bit of irony there. It's in that that's exactly where Jesus wants to be caught. Yeah. Catch me in my words. That's fine. Yeah. Because uh, it, it'll um, it will scandalize you. Yeah, you know it'll be shocking. Right. Uh, but it is also the means of life and salvation, and you know? and including yours. And some yeah, exactly of those Pharisees right. yeah. came around yeah, exactly too. Exactly right. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, like, subscribe, uh, check out crafterpreaching.com. There'll be some some more uh, resources there. Um, and uh, hopefully next week we'll have everything all together with our, our new digs. And uh, Matt will be back with us. Um, until then, God bless your preaching.